Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use Parcel, which is a blazing fast zero configuration web application bundler. Oh, and hey, I'd like to mention this video's sponsor, Skillshare.com. Now it's a brand new year here in 2019 and Skillshare will help keep you learning and thriving as they offer 25,000 different classes in coding, design, business, and more. For instance, you're about to watch my JavaScript tutorial, but you could watch this full course on the topic at Skillshare. Skillshare is also super affordable with a subscription that only costs 10 bucks a month. But if you're one of the first 500 of my subscribers to click the link below here in the description, you get the first two months free. So take advantage. What's up everyone, Gary Simon of Corsetro. So today I'm gonna to take a look at a bundler and I really haven't covered the most popular bundler yet, which is Webpack 4, but I have covered Gulp in the past, but I really wanted to cover Parcel because I, I recently started using it and it is so amazingly simple to use. All right, so if I show you the site here, it's parceljs.org and we could see, I'm not gonna go over everything that it does, but the, the greatest benefit that it does have is the fact that it is so easy to get up and running without pretty much any configuration work. And that's for SAS, and that's for stylus, that's for a bunch of things which you can find in their documentation uh, under asset types. So all this stuff is really easy to deal with when you're dealing with the bundling of your application. So for some people might be wondering why do you have to, to bundle your app? Well, in many of my tutorials that I do here, I don't do that because they're so amazingly simple. And so I just work stri strictly in index.html with uh, inline JavaScript. Uh, but when you're working on any project, in any serious project, and this probably account for about 95% of them, you're gonna want to use a bundler for multiple reasons. It's gonna reduce the size of your application. It's a lot easier with code splitting to, to organize your code. Uh, there's just a lot of benefits to it. So I'm gonna show you how to get up and running. I'm gonna stop talking now. Right, today's question, which bundler do you use? Is it Webpack 4? Maybe it's Parcel? Let me know in the description here and let's get started. All right, so the first thing we'll do is in your code project folder, wherever you store your stuff, let's go ahead and create a new folder with mkdir and we'll call this parcel test and then also we'll cd into it after it's created. Okay, so now we will put in npm. You're gonna need the node package manager in order to run this first. I'm gonna assume you have that if you're, look, if you're already looking at uh, JavaScript bundlers and such. So npm, we're gonna run init hyphen Y, the Y flag to answer yes to all of these commands. All right, and then we will open up our code editor. I'm using Visual Studio Code so I can run code period. And here we are with our package JSON file. Exciting stuff, there's nothing in here, of course, because we haven't actually installed anything. Before we install anything though, I want to get up just a basic project structure and just demonstrate a couple things and then show you how uh, it will start to work when we integrate parcel. So we're gonna have a source, not a file, a folder. There you go, right here. Inside of here, we'll put in index.html as usual. We will also put some scaffolding for HTML. So exclamation point, hit enter. All right, that looks good right there. And also we'll go ahead and just for now, we will link a style sheet in here and we're gonna put that in styles. Do it like this, styles, and it, we'll call this, not index, uh, we'll just call this main.css. We're not gonna work with SAS initially. I will show you how to work with SAS though. And we'll save that. And then also at the bottom, we'll put in a script source and then we'll make that equal to index.js. Okay, so up here, we'll put an H1. We'll just say my page for now. And also an image, because I wanna show you how to work with assets, which is, you know, it's pretty much automatic here at this point with parcel. We'll just put in images, and I'm gonna have one called mountain.png my mountain. And I'll reference that in the YouTube description so that you can just grab it. It's a royalty free mountain that I found. So I'm just going to drag it onto my folder here. And then 
Now we have some folders to create. So images is one. So we're going to grab that, put that in images, move it. Yes. We will also create our styles folder here inside of the source. And we'll create a main dot CSS file. And for the CSS, I'm just going to have body and we'll say background is yellow. So we can all be blinded. All right. So we'll save all this. We'll also create our index.js file inside of the source folder again. Okay. So inside of our index.js, we're going to work with modules here. And the way we'll do this is we're going to create another file first. And I'm just going to call this something like bro.js. So when you're, you're dealing with a medium to large size application, you're going to have a bunch of JavaScript files just so you have, and you're working with code splitting essentially and, and keeping things organized. So we're going to create the dumbest function you'll ever see in your entire life for this demonstration. And I'm just going to say, Oh, wow. My phone's going off. We'll say const and we'll, we'll create a function this way. Const bro equals, we'll pass in a greeting and we'll use our error function and we'll return with back ticks our greeting up top and bro. So our function will only return the string of greeting with a comma and a bro. Okay. And we're going to export bro. Okay. So if we want to use it in our index.js file, which is the, the entry point of our application, then we can say import bro from bro, and then we'll try to use it. So in order to use it, I guess we'll do, instead of console logging, I think we'll just do document.query selector to select our H1 element. There we go. And inside of here, we'll say text content equals bro. And we'll say with back ticks, how's it going? All right. So we'll save that and everything should be working here now. So let's go ahead and right click on our index.html open with live server. This is from an extension. So if you go over here to your extensions tab, type in live server, you can install it, reload visual studio code, and you'll have access to the ability to right click and open with live server. All right. So there we go. There's my page. Everything's looking except way here. This does not say our string that we wanted from our bro function. And we'll see, of course, we have uncaught syntax error, unexpected token index.js. It doesn't know what this is over here. And that's because that is based on ES six syntax. So you can't right now at this point in time, browsers don't understand this. Now, of course you could use require, but if you wanted to use other specific ES six code in your application and to future proof it, uh, then what we can do is use something like parcel or webpack. And so in our case, we're going to be using parcel to do this. And it is dead simple. The process of getting parcel up and running is pretty much uh, quite a bit easier than using something like webpack. So let's go ahead and we'll go to our selection or note, we'll go to view and we'll go to our terminal here. And by the way, let's close this port off. We don't want that running. And, and, the, and the reason is, is because parcel, when we run it, it will have its own dev server as well. I don't want to get these two confused. So here in parcel test, we are going to install, and this comes straight from the parcel documentation. We'll do NPM I for install hyphen D to save it as a development dependency. And then we can put in parcel bundler. So what we can do is go over to our package.json file. We can see that we have our parcel bundler as a dev dependency and under scripts, we can create a new script. We'll call this one dev and for dev, we'll say parcel and then the source of our index or the location of our index.html file, which is source index.html. 
All right, and I'm also going to replicate this line just for future reference because we're going to also have a production command and we simply add parcel build and we'll see how this works a little bit later on. Okay, so with that, we can then go back to our terminal. We can run npm run dev. All right, and it's going to start. The server is running, and here we go. It creates a dist folder with all of our files, even our assets and our source maps. Now, if I control shift I, we could see, of course, it's already working because here is our function that we ran that appends bro at the end. Very simple and easy. It was the, the matter of making this work uh, only took just a couple of seconds. We simply just install parcel. We create our scripts in package.json, and there you go. MP run dev. It's awesome. Okay, so now let's see what happens, for instance, if we want to use SAS instead. Um, so what we'll do is go to our main.css, right click, rename to SAS, SCSS. Okay, there, it wasn't, re I had to refresh this, it was actually changed. And we'll come up here and we will say, let's say we will make a variable. The variable we'll make is, I'll just call this something ridiculous again, sup, and we'll make it to light gray. And then we'll just change our background like that. All right, so we'll save this. And what we'll do is go back to our index.js file and we're going to import our SAS up here. So to do that, we simply import our styles, main.scss. And by the way, you can import your CSS, even if you weren't working with SAS, you could just import the CSS file that way, and that way you can get rid of this line up here, which we'll do right now. We'll save that, we'll come over here, make this SAS, all right, and now if we npm run dev this, it's going to notice that we don't have SAS, so it's going to install it for us. So we'll let that run, it it's pretty, goes pretty quickly, and now if we go back, we can now see it is gray, and that's because we're now able to use SAS. Very, very cool stuff. So also we can, I just wanna show you real quickly about uh, importing other modules essentially. So what we can do from other vendors, what we can do is we'll say, um, let's say we wanna use scroll magic or something. So npm i scroll magic. Okay, so I'll let that install real quick. Okay, and now what we can do is we'll go to our index.js file as we're currently in, and we'll import scroll magic from scroll magic. And this could be any library, really. And I'm gonna take this straight from the documentation of scroll magic. I'm just gonna paste this in. We're gonna take the set pin, make sure it's on body element and duration, we'll make it 500 pixels and you'll see how this uh, ends up applying. Uh, if we go back to our browser here, um, we can already see some things have changed. However, real quickly, I'll go to my main SAS and make the height of the viewport um, 200 viewport height. Save this, hot reloading of course is worked in with, with uh, SAS as well and now we can see some weird scrolling behavior from scroll magic. And this simply lets us know that scroll magic is definitely um, working. So very simple. And now one final thing I'll show you is if we, I'm gonna real quickly get out of here and I'm gonna delete the dist folder and we're gonna rerun npm run dev and we'll see it creates our dist folder. And I'm gonna take a look at the size of things over here. So if I open or reveal an explorer, we'll see we have 
our source file here, our JavaScript file, which is quite large, it's 122 kilobytes. So keep that in mind. We'll get back out of there, delete this again, and npm run build, or prod, sorry. That's the command that we created in the package JSON. So this is gonna create a production build and it won't launch a server. This is just for uh, pr production. And now we can see it's gonna let us know the, the size of our files that we're working with and our JS file went from 122 kilobytes to 23 kilobytes. So this does a lot of work under the hood and we'll see that we have uh, all of this has been minified greatly. Awesome, awesome stuff. All right, so hopefully you found that enjoyable and useful. Again, answer today's question, which is which bundler do you use? Let me know in the description here. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.